Welcome back to Casuals Corner and today me and Frank are very excited because we're joined by our very first special guest and before we jump into it and before we jump onto the call let me tell you what we do over here on this page. We shine a spotlight on the British MMA scene and also its athletes and that's exactly what we're going to do today. So before we get the conversation started with him, let me tell you exactly who it is. A very exciting flyweight fighter out of Manchester top team. At 20 years of age, he went 8-1 and one in his amateur career and he's currently 2-0 and oh in his pro career as well. First one by first round stoppage in 39 seconds. The second one, first round stoppage in 49 seconds. Hell yeah. Right. We're finally back in the shed, and this time we're joined by a very special guest. And Lou, you're not only a special guest, but you're actually our first guest. So not only welcome, but congratulations on that one. What an honour. Hey, buzzing. Nice one. I'm buzzing to be here, eh? Be your first guest, eh? So, man, thanks, thanks for thanks for coming on the call as well. Because if you don't know what we do, and we've done a little intro as well, we're basically just trying to not only shine a spotlight on the sport itself, but actually the athletes as well. Because as you know, it probably doesn't get the love and appreciation in the UK that it does around the world. So that's exactly what we're trying to do on our our channel. But let's just crack straight into it. Obviously, when I introduced you, I said you were from Manchester top team, but I know that you haven't always been there. So basically, just how you started and how you got into it and how you fell in love with uh, with a career, really, mate. Yeah, well, I was I could start. Um, I had a, I, I I've always been like into fighting all my life stuff like that. Where I'm from, it's a big fighting like community. I'd say where, where I'm from, I'm from the south part of Manchester, Wivenshaw, and you're either good at you're either good at football there or you're good at fighting. And like these 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 honourable like uh, footy players I can mention, like Raval Morrison came from where I'm from. Um, Marcus Rashford, who's a big name. Um, Cole Palmer who's coming up we play for Manchester City now and then the fighters I could name McCallum McGowan Jimmy Keller uh, even Tyson Fury was, is from like where I'm from at one point training at Jimmy Egan's so we've all got a good fighting we're very athletic like sports people and stuff like that and I me I was playing football and stuff like that and um, but I, I've always got my fair share of scraps and stuff like that like I've always been a bit of like a hothead anyway not just because I'm ginger or anything like that <laughs> You um, had to say it. I didn't want to make the joke. You had to get in there early with that I one. I had to get it in there before yeah. you do. <laughs> sure. Sure. Um, and basically, um, we're all like the astral turn, and I, having breaks between footer, and there was a, we were all grappling about mess, getting each other in headlocks and messing around. And then there was this quiet kid in my year, and um, one of the old years, like, you should grapple this lad. He does that UFC stuff or whatever. I'm like, <laughs> UFC stuff, yeah, like, all right. <laughs> I had a bit of a grapple with him, and I did. Oh, I did all right, to be fair. I mounted him a few times. And he's like, "Yo, you, you're pretty good at this." And how do you know some of the things you're doing? And I was like, "I've just been playing the UFC game, or I've been watching John Jones." Actually, <laughs> and he's like, "You should come down to the gym um, and train, and like a local gym." And I was like, "All right, fair enough." Came down, trained a few times, and then I loved it. I really did love it. And then, but it was very hard to get down and stuff like that. So. I was training on and off. I was being like, I was just being a 15 year old lad, like mm. going out, um, playing football, just live, um, doing other things, like just an active lad. I stopped for a bit and then I decided, and I started getting in trouble in school again. And, and then my head was just like, I need to burn my energy or something. Cause like, as you, as you get into the later years of school, you make your focus on exams and stuff like that. Don't let they cut you from football. And, I needed to bury my energy off on something and I realised that I should go back to MMA and try it again because I really loved the sport. I was a massive fan of it, not just like look, like training it. I, st I went straight into a local gym, um, All Powers Gym, and I didn't look back since. And I, I got coached by a guy called Carl Prince and um, he's been with me all the way. I literally went from All Powers Gym and we moved into our own facility, not what's now Manchester top team. Yeah. Nice, yeah. Was there a moment you thought... Right, I don't want to do this as a hobby. I want to go and actually fight someone because it's all well and good. The training is fun. You're training with your mates. Was there a moment you thought, I want to fight? I want to step in the cage? Yeah, definitely. I think the second time, like when I stopped, and then the second time around, I was like, right, if I'm coming here now, I'm going all in. And yeah, I went, I went straight in there, and I was like, yeah, this, this is where I want to be. I loved it. I loved, I loved everything about it. I loved the, I loved the fight, I loved the training. I just loved like the adrenaline. I love it all. I felt like. In, it sounds a bit weird, but I felt more comfortable, like more at home. Like yeah. I'm around the right set of people in it, being on the mat, being in the cage, it felt right. And I, even even when I was in the last year of school, I ended up like skipping school to go to the morning sessions and training. Yeah. 
and like my coach was like like you really are dedicated you can you can, you can see the fire in my eyes if mm. you want like see where how much i really wanted to do it and then he was like as soon as left field he was like right you've got to fight october 7th uh, on uk fighting championship and i was like yes finally and then the rest was just from there in it yeah amazing was there a specific moment in the amateurs you was like I want to go pro. This is a bit of me. This is going to be what I'm going to do for a job. I want to go all the way. Yeah. Um, there were probably two moments in that. My first ever amateur fight, I was like, I love yeah. this. I want to do it again. And then probably me, me loss, my first, ama- me first amateur loss, and my only loss really I've, I've, I've yeah. experienced until now. I was like, because I realised I, I, I fought a good kid and I felt like I was winning the fight and then mm. it was a massive learning curve and it made me mature into a better fighter. And, I realised like I can, I'm capable of doing something good here, or, or I'm decent at it. So I feel like I can go all the way. And then before you know it, I'm like three years later, I've turned professional now. I did, I did actually want to ask you about your your loss because when I was having a look at your record, and one thing I want to say as well, which I don't know if it's anything to to do with you or the organisations, but there's so much footage on you. I literally watched every fight, and I was <laughs> so I actually had no idea I was going to fight so. You need much. to get a highlight reel. Yeah, honestly, I, I spent the whole day just going through it. I'm sure we'll get into a few of them, but I wanted to ask you about your loss because it was your third fight, wasn't it? You lost yeah, yeah, by right. guillotine. It made me laugh because I saw you put that thing on your story about Volk. The other <laughs> <day>. <laughs> you have to embrace it, innit? That's yeah. I, just, I just wanted to ask you, was that... Because, I mean, in your third, your third amateur career, and it's not like it's a make-or-break moment, but to taste the loss quite early on, three fights in did you what was your sort of thought process after that was it right i'm gonna that's it i know i've got the skills i know i've got the ability i'm gonna go back and I'll smash it or was it a bit like am i actually meant to be doing this do you know what i mean did that yeah. doubt sort of creep in well to be fair i, I, I never want to lose but i kind of wanted to feel i probably like I always know when you're in a sport where anything can happen you could i could i could have been in the receiving and getting knocked out the other week and I think I always wanted to experience failure as well. I've, I've always, I say like I've failed in the gym. You, you might have, your, you might have your, your, your shit days in the gym and you think, but I really wanted to experience it in there as well. And when I got, when I got beat, like, it, I'll, I'll be truthful, I cried backstage. I was gutted. I, I didn't, I didn't, no, after me fight, I'm like eating whatever I want. And, like, and I, I can experience, like, I feel like free. Straight away, I was back in the gym one day and I wanted to get better. And then it lit a fire un- underneath me. I never want to experience that that feeling ever again. I never want to be shown up in front of everyone. I, don't, I never want to lose a fight. I don't want to be like, do you know what I mean? I, just, I don't want to be the loser. I don't want to be second mm. place. I want to be first because it, it goes to my competitive mindset and where is that? I think yeah. 100%. I think where you're not to put not to put words in your mouth as well but i think where you're from as well there's such a culture of that and the pride when i looked at your record as well i mean you you lost in your third and i think you're on an eight fight win streak at the moment it just looked yeah. i thought i looked at your record before i even started going through the footage and i did think i feel like that is a very good loss for him obviously there's no such thing as a as a good loss but i feel like it looked like it was good in your career because you watch the next fights you come out it was just the, that was another thing that I sort of wanted to touch upon for some people that may be listening that haven't watched you. I mean, I had a great time on the footage, and you're such obviously. I think the one thing that stands out for me is your sort of experience beyond your years. I mean, you're only 20 years of age, but you don't fight like it. The composure, the timing, even the thing that you stands out for me on the amateurs is sometimes someone hit, lands a shot and they rush in and they try and finish it but there was a lot more composure than that but for the people listening just sort of give us a little description of your style and also we had a question come in that was who do you base your style off or who's your top three fighters so instead of yeah. that we sort of mix them together who are your top three and who do you sort of base your base your style around well to be fair i've had a few people like compare me to a bit like colby Covington in a way because of your yeah. relentless style um i've had a few people probably say i'm like a bit like Conor McGregor because I'm Southpaw, for example, but I'm like, nah. But yeah. I think the top three favourite fighters, it got to be, i got to say it is Colby Covington as well because Southpaw, I try and mimic certain fighters as well, like uh, Colby Covington. I love Peter Yan. I think Peter mm. Yan is so class. I know I, I do want to sound cliche, but I'd say Conor McGregor's up there, but I love Big John Jones's and stuff like that. Not, not, not as much at the moment, obviously. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not yeah. a good timing for yeah. that. Yeah, it is it's what it is good, a minute. 
It's a good list, though. It's a good list of uh, people to look up to. One question I want to touch on just on your amateur career before we talk about your pro career, which we'll get to for sure. What would you say the main difference in like the lifestyle and mindset or have you always been kind of I'm all in from the amateurs? Because I know there's a lot of good, good amateurs that are training like pros nowadays. Would you say there's any difference? Like, what would you think about that? Um. We say, what's the difference between amateurs and pros? In terms of like the training, the mindset, the lifestyle for you personally. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say, to be fair, like I know so many amateurs and like including myself, we train like pros. Mm. I've met pro, I've, I've met so many pros in the past. And when I was an amateur, I trained more harder than them. There's other, there's other fighters from different gyms I could name who train like pros. Like they aspire a lot. I've trained with them and that they train. They train like pros when they were amateurs and stuff like that. I, I wouldn't say cer- certain fighters have a certain mindset, really. Like, you could look at someone like Mohamed Makaya, for example. Like, mm. I've trained him, and he, he has been, he has had a mindset like a professional since before he's, he had it, before he even had his, um, his amateur yeah, first amateur fight. Yeah, that's, the, that's what I mean. Like, it just comes down with certain fighters and how their mindset is and stuff like that. I do feel like you need to go through, like, I would, he's never he's never tasted defeat, but he's he's been in the gym and he's he's, he's, he's had that, that experience in the gym wrestling etc. Mm. But I feel like obviously just getting a good a good game of experience behind you and you just evolve mentally, not just physically. Yeah, it sort of, it sort of flows Normal. like into the next question I actually had really because obviously for those that don't know, Manchester top team's got some very very exciting talent coming out of it at the moment. And obviously, if you look at the top of the sort of tree in terms of name recognition at the moment, you've got Kane Musa. Who's yeah. he's fighting on Friday actually, isn't he? On the Bellator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Of, uh, one of Frank's uh, teammates as well is on that card as well, so we're gonna go and watch that. But um, oh, yeah. we'll be there. All I was gonna say was obviously you got Kane Musa, but you got Lo- Lerone Murphy as well, noticeably there. Just wanted to ask what sort of impact that had on you because obviously you're dealing with them very, very early on in your career, which is obviously nothing but a positive. So just how it maybe changes or how your experience is different from everyone else that you get to lean on them every sort of day and that experience really um well i've known i've known the ronin k now for years like i've heard of k before i even did mma funnily enough my uncle was in jail with him <laughs> so when he was in jail back in the day so i've heard of him through that and stuff like that and um, so i've heard of him when i went all powers i'm like oh yeah i know him and then I've, I've met uh, Laron, I've sparred with Laron, trained with Laron since I was like 14, you know, for about 15, 16 actually. And uh, I've seen him go from like, I've seen him evolve for years and and like the, the results he was getting in, in his fights. And uh, and then I could, it goes to show in it, like being them, so, around them certain sort of people, especially who change their lives around, like not from far where I'm from. And uh, they're doing they're doing so well for themselves. Like the roles are perfect, and the Souls Kane's a perfect example for a role model. And I've grew up I've grew up around them, and it's played a massive impact on me. Where I can I can like I've become like something like them, a good role model, a good fighter, and then um, I just get get what I what, what I really want and deserve. I'd say. Yeah, it's interesting. I think the old saying "iron sharpens iron," and not only that, like the confidence you can take from the guys in your gym if they can do it we can all do it it's, it must be a huge thing to have actual UFC fighters and like Bellator fighters in your gym so it's very interesting I did want to yeah. touch on your pro career um, so if I'm being honest right before uh, you scored that knockout I knew about you because I followed you on social media I saw you on TikTok just posting highlights of your knockouts and stuff. oh yeah so, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so how it's a bit of a different question big do you think that a social media presence is for like a, a modern day MMA fighter. I think it's huge personally, but what are your thoughts? Very big, actually. I've always had a decent following on Instagram. Mm. And then I remember TikTok, you fully mentioned that. I literally just posted a few highlights together on there, yeah? And I could, I could put it on my Instagram. And I've, I put I put the posters public. I, tad, I did a few hashtags and stuff like that. And then yeah. I've blown up on TikTok and I was mm. like, oh, and then to be fair, he's a, he's a good age range from there. Like, it's all the different types of like to, of TikTok. Like you, you get people like dancing or whatever, or like sports. Or, yeah, like, you weren't doing that. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, um, and then literally, I was just like, oh, I, I played off a big factor on there, and it, it got me a few followers through Instagram. And then, but I've I've always been like, 
a well-known kid where I'm from in Wimmy Shaw mm. anyway. So I've always had a decent following where I'm from because where my whole community does support support you. Whoever, whoever's doing well in my community, they support you anyway. 100%. So, but and as long as you stay active on your social media, it plays a massive factor, definitely. Yeah, and I think like the social media is all well and good, but the performances as well. Like I follow you on Instagram, right? And the amount of reshares of that last knockout that you got is just crazy. Like you're you're just I'm just tap tap tap. It's reshare. People are sharing it. We sharing it. So like, how many sort of messages, shares, and stuff have you received since your last fight? So many. I've not even got through to some of them all. You know. Yeah. I'll be truthful. Like it's actually so many. Like especially in the Instagram DM requests. So I, I have so many people following following me. I don't even know who's following me as well. So if you follow me, I probably I probably haven't really noticed. You know what I mean? Because yeah, yeah. so many people have followed me. So I'm not being rude if you haven't followed. Yeah. There's <laughs> just so many people following me literally. Worst problems to have. Worst problems to have <laughs> for sure. That must be super motivating, right? That's kind of like what you dream of as a fighter. Like, I'm going to go out there, I'm going to get a one-punch walk-off KO. That, and, like, that was only on a smaller show, right? So if you carry on doing what you're doing, it's just going to go up and up and up and up. So that must be super motivating, getting a finish like that. Yeah, definitely. Especially against a, good, a decent fight like Charlie mm. Falco. Like, I've watched him beat... I've watched him fight some good fighters, man. And, like, he beat he beat a lad from him who was from my gym. Like, Joe Ibrahim, Ibrahimov, he fought his teammate, like, his mate, like, friend... He's from Sheffield yeah. and he's from East Pakistan and stuff like that. And then he comes down to our gym and train for a little bit and he, he fought him and he gave him a good fight, man. It was a, it was a good fight, Kelly Gladiator. So I've heard of Charlie Falco, really, on the scene and he, he trains with Lee Mitchell and he's from uh, Arnold Allen's gym, innit? So okay. I, I already had an idea who he was. I was going to say, actually, as well, while we touch on your sort of pro career, obviously, when I introduced it, it said 2-0. Oh, the first round was, the first fight, sorry, was 39 seconds. The second fight was 49 seconds. And, I mean, you had a strong, like a very strong amateur career before that. So, one of the questions yeah. we got sent in, that I was going to ask you anyway, to be honest, but someone asked, where do you see yourself in five years' time? But I wanted to tweak that a little bit and say, not only where do you see yourself in five years' time, but where do you see the sport in the UK? Because... That's only what we're doing here. Like what I said at the start, we're really trying to grow it in the UK because you'll know as well as I do, it doesn't get shown the love. It doesn't get shown the appreciation. So, yeah, next mm. five years, what what, uh, what do you see? Um, I'd say MMA is going to blow up 10 times more. I, I definitely believe in Manchester as well. I feel like, just, like even now, not even just from your hometown, like Manchester people are starting to know it's been around me. Yeah. And Manchester is a big place, to be honest. And like, I feel like, the support people are and like getting behind their fighters and stuff like everyone knows Conor McGregor. So mm. imagine if someone were like, for example, like Paddy Pimlet, everyone knows Paddy Pimlet in Liverpool, even all the Manx know Paddy Pimlet. And like, if I'm going to be like that man, another fighter, I'm anxious to find out with a good support behind me. I feel like I'm going to be like another fighter like Ricky Atten. Like when, when Ricky Atten used to fight back in the day, like it was like, it was a madness. You'd think like a festival was going on. Yeah. And I feel like, if I was fighting like the the MEN, the Manchester Arena, which is a big, big, a big like dream of mine, I feel like the support will, be, will blow up. I feel like I'll be in the papers and stuff like that. But I'm not even just me. I feel like other fighters like Arnold Allen, Lerone Murphy, all these other fighters who are who represent in the UK now, they're gonna blow up even more. I feel like the the UK, the U, the MMA in UK is is the future so bright because the fund the funding's coming in it now. There's courses yeah. for kids to go on MMA. And it's just the it's the sky's just like the sky's like mint for it. Do you know what I mean? Hundred percent. I think the one thing as well that you can definitely acknowledge is in the UK we just don't have the infrastructure of mixed martial arts that somewhere like uh, America has, for example. You don't have yeah. necessarily a lot of wrestling schools, a lot of jujitsu schools, and even like you said, you just sort of got someone in a headlock at school and they're like, oh, come come train. There's not an awful lot of push for it. So like you said, I think over the next well, five to ten years when the funding gets bigger and when the names get bigger like yourself and you start putting your paces like, is it Withershaw? Yeah, you said that again. <laughs> Withershaw? With, with yeah. Is that right? Yeah? <laughs> now when you start putting now places it. like that on the map, like it, it will just, personally, I think, and like you just said, I think it's going to absolutely explode in, in mixed martial arts over the next 10 years. So I'm excited for it. If you keep doing viral KOs as well, I'm sure that'll probably help. Yeah. I'll keep up. I'll try and yeah. keep up. Anyway. <laughs> That's the plan. I wanted to quickly touch on that fight a little bit. Was there um, any like bad blood going in? Because I saw that he was saying stuff before. Can you uh, kind of explain the situation and what was going down before that fight? Yeah. I would like to talk about this as well because not a few yeah. people are happy for that, but a few people loved it. Um, I love it. What happened basically, right? He put a post up of um, 
of our fight poster on our fight and then on Instagram and he put I'm gonna put this guy in a dirt nap and he basically mm. means like he's gonna kill me or whatever, right? And um there was a there was a bit of like bit, bit of animosity between us, like the comments and people are arguing and stuff like that. And then um we'll give each other dirty looks all through the all through backstage and stuff like that. I've noticed. I was we were looking at each other up and down medicals and etc. So when I did knock him out, I leant over and I went Dirt nap, who's it who's in the dirt nap now? That's what I said. I'd be truthful, yeah. yeah I mean I that's pretty I, we saw that with uh Andy Smith the other day and Ryan Span. That was pretty much the exact same thing, really. Ryan Span was saying yeah. he's, he's got in his face and I thought fair enough, in the moment everything builds up, you knock the geezer out. He was literally swimming on the canvas, I think at yeah, one it was point. Stiff. It was stiff. It was, yeah, it was quite it was brutal. Bad, it, was but... it was one of them, it was one of them. Ooh, it's... Yeah, you know it's good when everyone's like, "You're all right <laughs> after." You know it's a good one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, a, couple of, a couple of questions I just wanted to sort of. I don't want to take any more of your time because I know we've got half an hour. A couple of questions I wanted to wrap up with, um, Lewis. The first one is one that I'm going to ask. Well, two of them actually. Going to ask all our guests that come on. So, we have a little section called Rising Stars on our YouTube platform, right? And we basically just do 15, 20 minute videos. And we put together loads of luck footage and knowledge of rising stars maybe that people haven't heard of that they should keep an eye out. So what we want from you is we want your top rising star, whether it's someone you fall, train with, saw at another gym, whoever it is, that we need to keep an eye out on, like, say, the next 18, 24 months. Yeah, definitely. I would like to... Can I give a few? Is that all right? Yeah, <laughs> go for it. Give as many as you like. I'm Rail only going to clip it down and put it out yeah. there in two years so you look like a genius. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to say Callum Connor from a gym uh, from Manchester top team that guy is class man like his t- his tie box w- w- what goes into his MMA game he's, he's unbelievable he had a class fight on Kelly Gladiator the guy the guy's striking and he's just class like he, he gives me he gives me some good like good insight like, like striking distance when to pick him off and stuff like that he's, he's class man he's an up and coming amateur he's really good and another one I would like to say is a, we call him AB, but it's Abraham Bahale. Um, he's a heavyweight from he's the gym. A monster. <laughs> so he, listen, listen, he's bro. A bro he's the quickest guy in the gym. He's the quickest guy in the gym, and he's an heavyweight. I'm not. I'm. I'm being serious. He's quicker, than, he's quicker than me, and he's an heavyweight. I've not seen a guy take him down either. He's another level. <laughs> you heard it here first, AB, because I actually I saw him. Uh, I follow him actually on Instagram, but I saw him on your Instagram, and I was starting to go look for his profile. And he is a savage. Yeah, he is. Yeah. A he, he, he is tunnel vision. He is. He is like red. Dead. Like he just. He has a. He had, during to his mindset reminds me. Of, it reminds me of like how a younger Mike Tyson was when he was younger. On um, it was just tunnel vision. Like he want. He wants to fight, and he wants it. He wants all the smoke, and he, he's. He's literally man. Like he's the perfect person to be around. Like training wise and stuff like because he's yeah. end of the day not just me in that gym. We're all we're all hungry, man, and we all feed off each other's energy. You are when you're around that certain when you're around the that, that amount of people, you're you're going to become another person. That aren't you? Like if you're the third, if you're like for example, you're the third. If you're like with six drunk, you're gonna you're gonna be the seventh drunk. Do you know what I mean? Or if you're around six sports people, you're you're the seventh sports person. Do you know what I mean? They say it with and millionaires, don't they? They say millionaires surround themselves by million and you are always the company that you keep really and exactly what you said if you're surrounded by absolute killers every single day you're just going to feed off that one last uh two last ones actually wanted and then anything that frank wants to touch on our second question off the back of that as well you can sit down with anyone and have a beer and a barbecue with anyone in the ufc roster who you choose <laughs> oh spot as well current roster Let's get it. I'll go, I'll go Connor because he likes to drink, don't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You'll be there all night. <laughs> yeah, get yeah. some whiskey he, down. He, yeah. he, likes, he likes to drink, don't he? So I'll probably go with him. Frank, anything you got before we Amazing. jump on? No, that's all good from me. I just want to thank you for coming on. It's been good. We've uh, got nah, some good insights, oh, some good pleasure, stars. No, nah, yeah. thank you. It wasn't to be here. Same as, same as me, Lou. I just want to say thanks for jumping on, mate. And also, what I want to do before we, before we jump on, jump off sorry i want to give you a chance just to plug your social so where to find you and when to catch you next as well when's your next upcoming fight or if you've got anything scheduled yeah well my next fight is going to be in women's show nice. i'm a main event main event show. <laughs> it was supposed to be 30th of november but uh the the, po- the event got postponed so i'll be fighting december 4th i'll hopefully get um 
a good opponent. I've, I've asked for three opponents. I asked for Jamie Kelly. I asked for Kira Mulholland. And I asked for a lad called Sam Bird. And two of them have not responded. The only person who responded was Kira Mulholland, really. But I'm wait, waiting, back, waiting back for whatever's coming forward. And hopefully, all for the best on opponents than that. Um, my social media is LewisMCGMMA2000 on Instagram. And it's the same on TikTok as well, I think. And if you want to follow me page on Facebook, Lewis for Girl and MMA. Top, man. Pr- again, just to say thank you, love. We loved having you on here. And at some point, I'd love to maybe even come up to Manchester and catch a fight as well. Let's run That'd it. Yeah, Let's yeah. run it. Yeah, they'll, they'll come down, man. It'd be good. It'd be good. Hope I've never been you. that far north, so I need an excuse anyway. And then we'll... <laughs> Sounds like Where's all to me. from? Uh, we're from Where's we're from London, like Essex area. Oh, I is. What team yeah. you support? West Ham. That's why when you said oh, my God, sorry, West Ham. Man. That's why I was straight <laughs> there. I had a big smile on my face. She's like, uh, Ravel Morrison's from there. I'm like, yeah, I know, I know about Ravel. Yeah. I know. Yeah, my, my granddad's from Sussex, and he supports what he supports West Ham. So yeah. Oh no. Nice. Are you gonna be um? Are you gonna be at Bellator on Friday? I won't be there, unfortunately. Um, but I will. I will be watching it though. <laughs> nice. Well, if I see any of your team, I'll give them a shout as well. But Lou, again, mate, thank you very much for for jumping on, and I'm hoping that we can get another call in at some time as well. Hopefully, after your next win, actually. Yeah, yeah definitely. That that'll be that, that's perfect. That'll be mint. Top man, I appreciate it. Love it. Yeah, Lou, just again, thank you, mate. I re- really, really, really do appreciate it for being our first guest and and for coming on and for giving us your time really I think that was about 40 minutes so I love for that yeah nice nice boys I really appreciate it I was meant that honestly honestly love what, I love what you're doing as well like I gave you a shout because obviously I, I, to be honest I, we saw you on social media oh, we liked what we sort of saw anyway but then not just that but obviously you've got a, you've got a lot of ability yourself I meant when I was going through those videos I didn't quite realise how well rounded your game was to be honest but I was no impressed. I know I know I know I've, got, I've had I've had like I've had, you know, I've had people compare me to being a wrestler. Now I've had people m- m- comparing me to being a sh- just a striker, and I'm like, I'm like that to people. Have you seen me full game? Like, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm a well rounder. I'm an MMA oh, yeah. fighter, not a striker, a wrestler. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can grapple, man. It was against one of um, I can't remember the fella's name, but it just I didn't want to I didn't want to put words into your mouth, but it just reminded me of Khabib the way you got him against the fence, broke him down, and you know what it was? It was that Khabib leg lock that he does with his legs, wraps the legs up, and then I think he jumps on a rear naked choke as well. He didn't even have the hooks in. I think you just gave him the Dagestani yeah. handcuffs. Yeah, the Dagestani. Yeah. Well, we, we drill that all the time. Any day we got we got Dagestanis in our gym yeah. anyway, so I'm working with them all the time. So I'm on the receiving end of that in the gym it, sometimes. Man. Love it. <laughs> yeah, that's Love it. it. Got the Dagestanis in the gym. You got the wrestling on check. But low top man, I won't take any more of your time. Thank you very very much, mate. Now, nah, thank you both for having me here. Anyway, my pleasure. Top nice man, one, bro. Have a good one. See you all later. Yeah. Bye bye. Take care.